Jeff Semenov eases his small boat down the Chula Vista Marina's boat ramp. All right, hold on just a sec. You got us going here. The National Marine Fisheries Service craft will help Semenov's team find out how the bay's 60 to 100 endangered green turtles are doing. He's concerned about some troubling trends. There's a lot more dead turtles showing up here in San Diego Bay than we'd like. Boat strikes cause some deaths, age and disease others, but individual carcasses lack the context that researchers need to assess the local sea turtle population. So few people realize that we have this thriving green turtle population here in, in San Diego Bay. And for creatures that can grow up to 600 pounds, they have a talent for stealth. And the fact that they're here is probably one of the best kept secrets for wildlife in Southern California. The bay's sediment-rich water feeds eelgrass and invertebrates, both favorite foods of the underwater swimmers. They look for food and rest in shallow, murky water in the evenings, and that's where researchers cast nets to catch them. So those nets are out there, the animals get entangled in those nets. It's a special net that doesn't harm the turtle. Um, and so once we see that it's been captured in the net, we go and pull it out and we'll bring it to shore. Grab the flippers. This juvenile turtle was snagged trying to swim through a patch of eelgrass near the Chula Vista Harbor. Nicely done. A research team led by Tomo Eguchi. Good job, guys. Already set up a field station on a spit of land on the old South Bay power plant property. The location is close enough to catch and examine the animals. Which one was first? Yeah, all right. Give me that. Aguchi works at the Southwest Marine Fisheries Service. He's been studying the bay's sea turtles since 2004. He says the now dismantled power plant was a draw for the animals. Their growth rate was much faster than what you'd expect at this latitude. They were similar to the ones in Florida and the Bahamas just because of the warm water. The plant created a sort of turtle jacuzzi as it pumped heated water into the bay. So. Now that power plant is gone, we're expecting them to start growing slower than before. And that's why we're measuring all these turtles every time we catch them. Aguchi says turtles are harder to catch these yeah. days because scientists just can't camp out near the power plant. Get the data sheet going. This turtle isn't new to the team. It has a tag on its right front flipper. Aguchi scans the left flipper for an embedded chip. Those subdermal chips will work the turtle's entire life. Four. Four, six, Robin LaRue is the deputy director of the local marine mammal and turtle division. So the first time we caught this turtle was in August of 2013. She checks the number against her records and finds this turtle was last caught in 2014. And then we haven't seen it for the last three years. A rope harness allows the team to hoist the turtle off the ground. Aguchi gets enough clearance for a weigh-in. So the weight is really, yeah, 65 kilos. The turtle is lowered back down and a washcloth is draped over the animal's face. But this is not where the young turtle wants to be and it moves quickly toward an opening in the plywood pen. I'm trying to get this side, there we go. Volunteer Sabrina Mashburn offers a calming caress. Sea turtles are a passion for her, and she's set up a website to record and track local sightings. Mashburn says a recent survey found many commercial boaters know about the turtles, but recreational boaters don't. One benefit of educating recreational boaters about turtles is that they'll be looking for them, and hopefully we can decrease uh, the number of boat strikes that we have on our local turtles. And I'm now using um, alcohol to rub off any um, algae or anything else on the carapace so that the glue can stick well. The last bit of the night's business is attaching a satellite transmitter. It's an autonomous device that will send a signal every time the sensor breaks the water's surface. Sometimes only one or two transmissions a day. Aguchi says the transmitter will work anywhere from a few weeks to as long as three months. That's right, yeah. And the tracking information will be added to a growing database on where the local population goes. The animal doesn't hesitate when it finally touches the shore. The turtle slips into the nighttime waters in less than a minute. But the creature leaves behind important information. That data will help researchers better understand the elusive turtles and the habitat they live in. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.